Hi, welcome to a special edition of Mississippi Stories. I'm your host, Marshall Ramsey, editor-at-large and editorial cartoonist with Mississippi Today. We've got a repeat visitor today, somebody that I really had a great conversation with. It's hard to believe it's been over a year ago now. I know. I <laughs> And we both look younger. It's amazing. It's amazing how that happens. But we have Dora Hutton, Dora Lisa Hutton here. It's Chief Operations Officer for the SR1 College Preparatory and STEM Academy. And um, you know, when we, last time we talked, we were talking about how things were, you know, starting to get off the ground and things were moving in the right direction. And well, guess what? They actually are off the ground they and are, are moving in the right direction. And so. Thank you for coming back in, and because, and, you know, we can talk a little bit about what y'all are doing and what you hope to do and, and some of the great things, but I think there's some questions, too, that people have a little bit about what's a STEM Academy, and, you know, what does a kid that's in K through 5, what do they get when they're not just rote learning where you just have to memorize things when you actually have hands-on training and so forth, and, and if I remember correctly, you're amazing on camera, so this is going to be a fun interview. I'm excited about it. Was happy to be back again today. And what you just mentioned, SR1 College Preparatory and STEM Academy, is Mississippi's first free public STEM charter school in the state of Mississippi. And we are so excited. We just wrapped up our first year. We focused on K and first, and we will have K first and second grade starting for 24-25 school year. And at full capacity, will be K to five. And Marsha just mentioned something great. Rope memorization is not what we do at C SR1 CPSA. We believe in students having problem solving, critical thinking skills, and we're infusing STEM into their everyday subjects. By infusing STEM, we're teaching them to be future thinkers, future uh, engineers, future uh, nurses, doctors, mm -hmm. teachers. And we're doing that through project-based learning that's working through problem solving, where it's not just a right or wrong answer. Right. We're working to get to an answer, and guess what? The first answer might not be the right one or the best one, so we're going to keep going. Uh, we're pulling on things such as the scientific method where they're able to do hypotheses and observations and make predictions. Um, and so what we're able to see through that in our first year, our kindergarten class, grew by over 100% wow. in our standardized testing. So 102% to be um, exact. Um, our first graders had over 69% growth. And that's a testament to what we have built into our principles for our school, that every child has the right to a robust and positive learning environment. Mm -hmm. um, no matter what your zip code, no matter your ethnicity, we are an all-inclusive free public STEM charter school. How did how do you find your students and how do students become a part of it? So students can become part of us um, if you are in the Canyon Public School District, Jackson Public School District, Yazoo City, Yazoo County, Lee County, Hines County Public Schools. You're eligible to attend and we will be more than happy to have you. Uh, registration enrollment is free and easy. Um, you can visit our website um, at www sr1cpsa.org and it walks you through the steps and we'll be more than happy to assist you as well in person. When people hear STEM, what does that mean? Because sometimes people don't know what STEM means. That's true. So STEM in its just natural is science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. But we're taking that deeper. And the reason why STEM is important, uh, if you look at the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, STEM professions are projected to grow over 11% in the next 10 years. Currently, STEM jobs are already almost a quarter of the job market. So if you take already, we're almost at 25% with 11% growth, then that means we need future STEM leaders. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're producing at SR1 CPSA. So as I mentioned before, we're taking the science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, but what we're doing is making global leaders through critical thinking, through problem solving, through collaborative efforts. And so they're taking those skills, and we had parents that tell us, we honestly had to have conversations with the family that we can't talk to our K and first grader as we used to, because now they're gathering all these skills, real world life skills, mm -hmm. and their train of thought is different. Their vocabulary is growing, it's different. So we're incorporating all of that through STEM infusion into our learning, which is just that we're teaching them to be global leaders, self-thinkers, self, -thinkers, self um, 
workers. They're motivated to learn. Yeah, I was just thinking that those are skills that obviously not only translate in the workplace, but also in like real life. Yes. And you completely nailed it. Even the families are starting to see a difference. They're starting to see even at the kindergarten to first grade level. And I can say I have definitely seen growth too in our students from when they first came uh, to now. It's just wonderful. Um, we're, we're going to keep that going uh, by being a part of SR1 College mm -hmm. Prep Restoring STEM Academy. You're also entitled to free summer camp. So our students will be participating in a five-week summer camp um, hosted at one of our great partners, Millsap College. We're set to start next week and very excited. That's one thing about y'all. have a lot of great partners. Yes. You, you want to give a chance to brag on some of them? I'm going to brag on some, and if I miss others, blame it to my head and not my heart. Uh, but Millsaps College is one who's been there with our organization since 2011. We also have the Natural uh, Science Museum, and they have hosted our students um, for classes every month of the academic year. So our students were actually to have classes there, and what they do is provide behind-the-scenes learning. Um, so instead of just going there through the exhibits, they're actually able to learn about the ecosystem, see the ecosystems of the animals. They're able to determine um, if things happen with in an ecosystem, how would that infect the natural habitat of animals and also humans as well? What sets SR1 CPSA apart from other college preparatory and STEM focused schools in yeah. the area? So one thing is we're the only one. Well, that's uh, there you the, go. Only yeah, one. And then easy. what we've been able to do that some people thought wouldn't be possible, we're starting at the kindergarten level. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're setting that foundation for K through fifth graders which has really been unheard of, but STEM is possible. And what we like about setting that foundation is we're teaching them to have this way of thinking and learning versus having to change a mindset once you make it to college. We're already preparing them uh, to be leaders before they even make it to middle school. And it's easier, obviously, and I can just tell, whether it's foreign language or anything else, the earlier you teach those skills, the easier it is for them to pick up. That's true, and you mentioned rote memorization. Mm -hmm when uh, you started, and I can remember being in school those ages ago, spelling tests were every week, and how did you learn your words? The teacher wrote on the board, then she had you to write it five times or 10 times, because technically you were just memorizing those words for a test. No, we're teaching our students to think outside the box, so they're not learning words uh, just to know for a test. So we're building vocabulary and phonics, um, and they're able to work their way through uh, math problems because they're real world life changing problems. How do you develop a curriculum like that? Because like I said, you're starting literally from the ground, from mm -hmm. kindergarten and you're working your way up. You're adding a class every year, so that's how you're gonna get to five. But every year, so obviously you're building a new curriculum mm -hmm. for every grade. How does that process work? So we are actually, um, our founder, Mr. Tim McGreen, is a STEM graduate from Mississippi State. Got to see him University. just a few minutes yes, ago. He yeah, it's good to see great. him again. And he has this uh, phenomenal way mm -hmm. of just seeing things, I guess, this STEM world, this STEM brain of his, and he's a visionary in that. And so he's been able to really project beyond what we see now with what needs to be developed. So he's mm -hmm. working across sectors with partners um, and curriculum developers. And so he's taking all of that knowledge and bringing in great people into the organization who can develop those curriculums and project out to our students and teachers. What and even our parents, I like to, the parents, that, I'm about to say, I was going to ask, are the parents involved in the day-to-day, -day what's, what's going on? So they are definitely involved, and we host activities such as a family STEM night, a family STEM and what goes day. On, what goes on at family STEM night? So we introduce exactly what is STEM, because sometimes that's a buzzword that people say, but what is it? How can I help my child at home with STEM? And so we bring in different partners, mm -hmm. our community partners, our higher ed partners, and so they actually provide workshops and learning opportunities for them to learn how to promote and, um, I guess, actually work with STEM at home with their students. I was about to say, yeah. you get the parents involved. It's not just, they're not just learning during the day. Exactly. They're learning 24-7. And that's it. That's what we yeah. believe at SR1 College Preparatory STEM Academy. It's not just about the student. Yeah. It's about the family, and it's about the community as a whole. Well, you obviously touched on some of the extracurricular activities with, with STEM night mm -hmm. and so forth, but what are some of the other programs that you do, in, in, including enrichment programs, um, to help complement the academic curriculum? So our students actually have a STEM class. Okay. So in addition to uh, STEM being infused into their language arts 
or into their math activities, uh, they also have STEM activities day every day. And so they rotate in and there they're able to explore and dig deeper. Um, so they become their own little thinkers and, and makers. They, uh, we call it their maker space um, because they're able to tinker and learn on their own. Of course, with guided and facilitated uh, instruction from their teacher, but it's their time in their area. We've also uh, had the opportunity, our students were featured on WLBT mm -hmm. Studio 3, um, and they actually uh, conducted a STEM experiment there on oh, television. Nice. Mm -hmm. So our K and first graders, that's all part of being a STEM, learning communication skills as well. Um, but we're really excited about the growth of the school. What was the experiment? So the experiment, they actually looked at con condensation mm -hmm. and how rain is made. And so they walked wow. the viewer and the host uh, through the whole process and what happens there. Oh, that's very cool. Yes. Yeah. Brag on your kids a little bit. Tell us some of the success stories. I can brag all day um, about our kids. As I've already mentioned, we saw growth um, at the grade level mm -hmm. growth, uh, school-wide level growth. Uh, we actually recently just had awards day. Um, and when you think of awards day, let me tell you, we had so many ties yeah. for language arts or reading for math, and we rewarded them uh, with plaques. We rewarded them with certificates. Um, one young lady said that, that was the best day of her life. Oh. Um, and that's how we make every day at school. Um, they were actually sad their last day mm -hmm. because uh, now they had to wait to summer camp. Uh, but the kids are phenomenal. Um, they're able to... One thing I would like to say, they work together as a group. They're very supportive. That's another thing we do, yeah. social and emotional learning, which teaches kids to be um, self-aware and have empathy for one another. So that's one thing I can say. It's never been a time that if a student needed assistance, there wasn't one of their peers there to assist. They're also, um, they work together to problem solve. Um, disagreements are resolved. Yeah. I mean, they're little kids, so you know things sometimes. <laughs> Just, oh, you took my pencil. They work it out. So a lot of the times, because we're uh, integrating those activities, teachers are able, instead of um, having to be a disciplinary, their classroom management is already there. And the students are helping every day based on that culture that's been set to direct them. Last time we talked, like I said, it seems like a million years ago, but it wasn't. But you, you were really talking about building a new campus and I mean the, the new SR1 educational campus it really is going to be um, something that really helps the kids to be able to dive into the STEM. When we talked about a little bit, how's, that, how's the progress on that coming? So with our um, STEM campus, mm -hmm. so it's um, 250 plus acres and what we want to do with our campus there is make it a sustainable campus. We need to make it sustainable. And so there will be a lot of renewable energy sources. Uh, it will also be learning activities. There is a greenhouse design. Uh, so when you think about a greenhouse, of course you naturally go to agriculture, but it's by design. Mm -hmm. Mississippi is an ag state, but we know our farmers are losing out. So we want to introduce ag at that early age, because again, that's still STEM, still that learning process. And so students will have things such as hen houses where they can help take care of the chickens and harvest the eggs. They will have acreage mm -hmm. outside uh, where they can help plant and grow and sustain uh, food for the community. They will also have indoor laboratories in, inside learning. Uh, in addition to that, there will be walking trails where they can connect with their learning in the classroom to their outdoor space. We also have a design for outdoor learning activities and classrooms. Um, and so what we really, with that, looking for great, great uh, donors who can help support that. Because as you know, getting that up from the ground floor uh, will be a tremendous task. Um, the land has been secured. Mm -hmm. um, one thing though that, that we're working on that has caused a delay is getting quality wastewater there. Uh -huh. So quality water coming in, pumping the wastewater out. And so we've been able to work uh, with some firms, but we also are always looking for great uh, engineers and others who will just support us in those efforts. That campus is off of 51, off of 51. right? 51. 51, kind of north of Canton. North of Canton, That's yes. Right. So it's going to be a very sustainable campus. Yeah. Um, so we're looking at everything from solar panels um, to composting models. Uh, some things that will be new, the first thing in Mississippi, but other states have shown that they're uh, actually working. So um, we're excited. Um, the plans are there. We would love for you to visit us or, and we can lay out the plans for you. It's exciting. That's, a, that's obviously um, 
That is exciting. I mean, mm-hmm. I'm really glad that y'all are you're making the progress on it so far. Where's Where's the campus now? So the campus now is just that getting everything laid for the board. Okay. Um, so I've been working with utility companies there mm-hmm. uh, to get everybody um, on their part. Mm-hmm. And once we get that, the uh, design has already been built by the architecture. Right. We're ready to go once the water is ready. So you're, you're starting up a new class next year. Yes. So that's kind of exciting it's now. Kind of exciting. So, so do you all have to bring in new teachers and so forth every year? Yeah, every year. Okay. So we're growing. Uh, so we'll add a grade. So we started it off with K and first this year. Yeah. We'll have K first and second for 24-25, and we'll keep expanding out, so we are excited. And you're a charter school as well. Yes. Right, yeah, so it's, it's not just a, an academy, but it is actually a ch- yes. public charter school. It's a free public charter school open uh, to any students, K through second. Oh, that's excellent. Mm-hmm. That's excellent. What ways, you know, you talked a little bit about the support, and I really did kind of think that was cool, the fact that you've got them working together, mm-hmm. not against each other. Yes. So there probably is a degree of competition, but it's a healthy competition. It's a very healthy competition. Um, at awards day, we had one of our kindergartens who actually scored the highest in every subject area. But yeah. you would have thought that it was everybody's awards. The entire kindergarten class was cheering for it, the entire yeah. first grade class. And that's what we want to promote. Um, if we had more of that in the world, yeah. we would be a lot further along. And so our kids are seeing that firsthand. And yeah. uh, we're going to continue to embed that in the culture of our school. That's right. Tell us um, anything that I've forgotten to ask. I mean, because like I said, I think we've covered a lot of it. Is there anything particularly you'd like to talk about that you're really proud of? What I would like to say is the organization as a whole, uh, before we even started the uh, charter school, we've had phenomenal growth in our students, um, Mm -hmm. in our families. And so this was actually a product of our parents who are involved in our nonprofit uh, coming and asking, look, we've seen such great growth in our students and such great growth in the community. Would you all be willing to start a charter school? We took on that task, and we're seeing that task through. It's not an easy task. Yeah, but to but say, I was going to ask you how it started from literally from the ground up. When I say it's yeah. rewarding, yeah. Um, I tell people one thing I really appreciate, I have the privilege to work at S. Homeland. I don't work no. there. I have the privilege to work there. And um, we're impacting change for generations who are yet to come, generations that I won't see but we're reaping and sowing now for them and so just very proud of that uh anyone who is willing to volunteer or help support through donations on this journey that we have a proven track record we would love we love both human and financial sustainability support you you like uh people and green at the same time yes yes before we go, like I said, your background is pretty interesting. Tell tell everybody a little <laughs> bit about you because you've got more degrees than a thermometer. No, I'm just one of those people who was curious. So yeah. um, undergrad, healthcare administration. That's right. Um, went back, got a master's in public health. Wanted to go back again, mm-hmm. so have a master's in biomedical science. But that's just how my brain works. Um, learning, I don't believe you ever stop learning. Once you stop learning, I think you stop living. Um, and that's what we want to instill in our students at SR1 College Preparatory and STEM Academy. The world is theirs. They are there to make a difference, make change. And we are building the best STEM leaders, not only yeah. for the state of Mississippi, but for our nation and the country. We're making global aware leaders. Well, I mean, like I said, just you as a role model, having to agree in there as a role yeah. model. There's, there's a lot of good people for those kids to learn from. And you know, when you're when you're six and seven and eight years old and you see a grown up who's like curious and, yes. and a lifelong learner, it's kind yes. of you like think I wanna be like that too. That's it. And and yeah. so that's why it's so important to have great social modeling. Yeah. Um so even with our educational staff, we're making sure we're getting the best. Getting the best. Getting the best. And I would like to say, oh uh, Marshall, I learn as much from them as they probably learn from me. That is true. I yeah. I enjoy I, I just truly enjoy being in their presence. Yeah, and like I said, it's so cool, like you said, the way that you teach for them to do literally trial and error yes. and the scientific method to, yes. to figure out and realize, okay, now this is how I get to the truth. Exactly, yeah. and just thinking through that problem side. Well, as we wrap up, this has been a great conversation. Thank you so much oh, for coming thank you. in. This has been really fun talking to you. Well, let's, let's real quick, how can folks find out more? Yeah. That's important. Yes, so I'm gonna give you the telephone number and also the website. Okay. So if you call 601, 601- Two zero six four five four four, and let them know you want to learn more about S1 CPSA. 
we would be more than happy to help you. Uh, our enrollment specialist will be there to answer any questions you may have. Also, you can visit the website at www.sr1cpsa.org. Very cool. Anything else that you want to add? I mean, we've covered a lot of territory. Today. Yes. Just want to add that if you have a kindergarten, first, or second grade student, and you're looking for a way to enhance their education. If you have a student who loves learning, if you are a parent who wants to see your children grow both academically and socially, SR1 College Preparatory and STEM Academy is the right place for them. And we look forward to them being a part of the Vanguard mm -hmm. family. That's our mascot, Vanguards, because we believe we are making a change. We're leaders of change. The only bad news about all this is I'm too old to, to sign up. I feel the same way. Yeah. I said I wish I had time, but hey, I will just go along with them and blend in and learn. How about that? <laughs> that's great. Though. Like you said, that you, you've got a you know Canton School District. You've got Yazoo, Yazoo mm -hmm. City. I'm trying to think. Jackson. And Jackson Jackson Public. Well. You have Hines County, yeah, yeah. Uh, Leake County, and we actually have uh, students who are coming as far. That's away. fantastic. Mm -hmm. That really is. Yes. Well, thank you so much. It's, thank been, you. it's been really fun today. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Oh, you are welcome. And, and thank you for watching another episode of Mississippi Story. If you'd like to see more, well, make sure you like uh, the, the little like button. We'd love to hear from you as well. I'm Marshall Ramsey. Until next time, thank you so much for watching.